I have some folks on Facebook who are constantly posting these things. I swear, I'm gonna just put them on pause because when I say something back, they get all defensive. I'm like, since I'm just saying my opinion. <laughs> I'm sorry you ain't liking it, but <laughs> this is just how I feel. Anywhere from 10 to 30, 40% pay increase and also give you the same benefit and give you even more money. 12 months in a year, right? And 120. That means I got to le legit work for 10 years for you to pay me back. 10 years? 10 years ago, when I worked in local government and my salary now, I have quadrupled my salary in 10 years. I looked at them post my job for my last government position, not even a year ago. Y'all, that thing ain't increased at all. Here I've quadrupled my salary. So I'm a little confused. Do you wanna spend a ton of time waiting just to get your student loans paid back? I can barely commit to a man for 10 months and you want me to commit to a job for 10 years? <laughs> Open your eyes. The federal government is just giving you just, it's like dangling that carrot over your head, but it refused to let you bite it. That happened to me more than once. More than once. Um, matter of fact, that happened to me in government and non-government. Hey y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind HR. And one thing happened for sure on that last video, Y'all got serious about this government HR versus civilian HR. I made it clear I'm not really a big fan of government HR, sorry. But so many of you either sent me DMs, comments, like emails asking me to tell me why not. You know, I'm thinking about it, I like it, I want it for this reason. And it, it, it kind of was like even more confirming because for the reasons that you guys gave me, I was like, yeah, this is why I don't care for government HR. <laughs> But this video is going to tell you not only about my experience working in governmental HR, but also the differences between the two, pros and cons. So if you want to know the difference between government HR and your regular civilian HR, definitely keep on watching. Now, when we talk about government HR, many people can get a little bit like excited about it and the craziest thing is like they're not all talking about the same thing when they talk about government hr so some people are talking literally about the federal government working for the federal government in some capacity supporting the hr department for whichever facilities they may have we all know that the u.s federal government has offices everywhere for different reasons if that's travel if that's safety is that military what have you taxes of course how could we forget about that one but there are tons of reasons to have like a governmental facility office location so there are tons of different opportunities to work in hr for the actual federal government another type of government hr is instead of working for the federal government you may work for the state government so the state obviously supports the federal government so a lot of people may work for hr for the state in some way i think it's most common that it's for schools prisons hospitals sometimes like things that are state owned and then you also have your local government so your local government either covers the county or the city so that's a whole different type of government right because if it's for the county it could be for like serious courts that really put people into like federal time or extended long time into prison. Um, it could be to cover a much wider area. You're still going to cover your police officers. You're probably going to get more into like higher level police officers. And so the city is primarily for whatever the city provides for those who live local. The city could be for police officers, firefighters, for your emergency team, like your EMS. It could be for your golf course. It could be for your street cleaners. It could be for those who maintain the grounds and keep it all clean it could be for so many different things but it's everything that supports the city let's go back to county for just a second because i missed a big part with county county always covers or at least in south carolina i'll say it always the county also covers school teachers too so people may work for a county and now they qualify for state and county benefits so now you have an hr department that's supporting like teachers and schools as well all right so now let's talk about one more type of government that I have not hit on. So I've hit on the state, I've hit on the county, I've hit on the city, I've hit on the federal government, right? There's also military, military government, they have HR too. I personally am a big, big fan of civilian HR. My experience in government was with the state level and the city level. That's my experience. I worked a little bit, like I had colleagues and we did trainings and stuff with folks in the county level, but I've never literally worked for the county. But I had enough experience working for local government that 
it told me I absolutely didn't want to go any higher. Absolutely didn't. I spent my first four, almost five years working in government HR. That was the start of my career. So it wasn't like a short period of time, in my opinion, that was a long time. I am such a big fan of civilian HR. So civilian HR is anything outside of a government or federal capacity. So that could be your nonprofits, that could be your for-profits, that's various industries, like your auto, your retail, your consumer, your businesses, your technology, like all of those things are like just traditional civilian HR. Now military HR, I've had a lot of colleagues over even before I even thought about my HR career. And I, I've picked their brain over and over. Even when I was studying for the SHRM, I was in classes with folks that were in military. I mean, I've even had a friend who committed suicide and his, I supported his wife and she had to go through HR a lot. So I was there seeing her go through that and how she interacted with HR. You know, I started hearing, seeing them get so frustrated, hearing them get so frustrated that I was like, tell me what do you do on a regular everyday basis? And so overall, whenever I talk to anyone, military HR is all the way different. So military HR is all the way different from civilian HR and in my opinion, government HR. It's a different type of government, but military HR is a whole nother animal. And I feel so bad for folks in military HR because they assume that they can go straight into civilian HR and it's a whole different animal, completely different animal. So now this video already going to be long. So we ain't doing a ton of talking about military. We just going to put military with government. <laughs> if you want me to break that down some more, you just going to have to go wild on this video again, like you did on the last one. And then I'll do the military HR, but <laughs> I already outlined a pretty, pretty long video. And I already spent a ton of time breaking down those ones for you because well, I'll ask them like, well, who do you work for? And I have clients who have worked for the federal government, the state, the county, the all over the place and but they're all the same so now that i've already broken that down for you and gave you guys a full idea of what that looks like let's talk for a second about well one thing i didn't tell you is that my civilian hr experience totally comes from my experience like it doesn't come from shared knowledge colleagues networks that type of thing now my government experience comes from a mixture of my experience colleagues professional groups study groups all over the place. The next thing I want to do is I want to talk about the benefits. Let's start on the highs and we'll just end it on things that aren't so positive and why I'm not excited about it. But I think this part's going to make all of us happy, right? So let's point out the obvious. For government HR, they have transparent um, salary charts that you can see. So no one's ever confused about how much they can get paid, right? Everybody automatically know this is a GS this, or if it's like for the county or the state or city, most times it's posted online. Most times when somebody makes over a certain amount and here in South Carolina, it's $50,000 a year, then that's posted publicly online. So you know folks salary on an annual basis. Most times whenever you apply to their job, the salary bands are listed there. So it's, it's no hidden secret on how much you're going to get paid, how much they're offering for this position. The only difference that I don't like, and I guess I should have put this in the pros, I mean, in the cons section, but one thing I don't like about that transparency is the higher you go in government, the wider the pay bands get. And I think that that's unfair because now they leave you shooting in the dark. You really don't know what you're getting. When I see these pay bands this wide, it makes me feel like there's inequities because I've seen it so much in my career. Um, um, I have some folks on Facebook who are constantly posting these things. I swear, I'm gonna just put them on pause because when I say something back, they get all defensive. I'm like, since I'm just saying my opinion. <laughs> I'm sorry you ain't liking it, but <laughs> this is just how I feel. They're very transparent about these salary charts, so you always know the salary. With government HR, they work a little bit slower, so that really makes it easy for you to get a lot of practice over time and not to feel rushed to go from one technique, one process, one just whatever is taught to you new. You don't have to do a lot of me mental pivots to learn a new concept. So they move really, really slow and makes it easier for your learning curve. Because even moving that slow not only do you get a chance to emotionally and mentally recover from doing something for the first time or doing it again and probably making mistakes but you also get more hand holding you also get more patience from other folks with your learning curve more time to breathe to go through that learning curve learning curves are tough when the time span is shorter so that's another great benefit of government HR is that things move slow so the next benefit is that there's stability inside the benefits and so this part we got to talk about a few things because y'all hit all over me in the comments and I was just like, child, I hear you, but 
Think about it. All right, so the benefits are pretty stable because you always know that there are certain benefits you're gonna get working in government HR. You're gonna automatically get that medical, dental, vision. You're automatically gonna get, yes, public stu service student loan forgiveness. So much of you excited about this, public, public service student loan forgiveness. We're gonna talk about that too. You get stability in your benefits. So even with your benefits, it's a little bit easier working in government HR because a lot of of times you get like first time home buyers like perks they're there i'll say this there are a lot more available for a long time specifically here in south carolina there's been a lot for firefighters school teachers police officers where they get thousands of dollars given towards them getting a home and they still qualify for other first time home buyer benefits that just makes things a little easier there's some cities that give money to you on top of the first time home buyer benefits that you qualify for that's another great benefit of working for like government hr is if you need that type of assistance or you're looking for that type of assistance but let's talk about this public service student loan forgiveness what i'm going to do is put on the stream so you guys can see exactly what the minimum requirements are. I'm not going to tell you, oh yeah, that's a great benefit, da, da, da. I do think it's a great benefit. I feel horrible that there's not enough education about this benefit. And so I wanna go through these benefits and tell you what type of perks you're gonna get. The first thing about it is, is paying you back a fraction of your student loans over a super long period of time. You know, instead of waiting on the cons, I'm gonna just go ahead and tell y'all now. With this public service student loan forgiveness, it really sucks because they're taking that as like your education reimbursement. If you go work in civilian, you, you can get so much more money in a shorter period of time. So I really don't understand why people stay on a job for 20 years that's gonna just keep increasing them by 50 cents or a dollar every year when you can work for a company that's probably gonna increase you by 10, $15 more per hour, definitely anywhere from 10 to 30, 40% pay increase and also give you the same benefit and give you even more money. So I'm a little confused. Do you want to spend a ton of time waiting just to get your student loans paid back? You know, meanwhile, I have literally worked with firefighters who are just at the brink of not being able to qualify for like food stamp or ABC voucher so that their kids can go to school and be and not be okay at home like lose their home lose their cars use one car for a family of seven i've seen a lot of things and i think that that's the part that makes me say open your eyes the federal government is just giving you just it's like dangling that carrot over your head but it refused to let you bite it and i'm not even saying just federal hr but any governmental hr it's repetitive but if you work in civilian hr there's so many companies that offer different things there's so many companies that listen to your feedback and provide it there's so many companies that may not have had that in that budget but they may put that in a miscellaneous budget and still help you anyhow that happened to me more than once more than once um matter of fact that happened to me in government and non-government hush. now let's talk in a little bit more details i'm not just going to show it to you i'm gonna walk y'all through this thing because i used to educate people on it all the time and in my opinion i noticed that people would get excited but then it means like you literally have to marry your job well now you don't get flexibility and trying to learn your job better because you're sitting here just waiting on this money right so to qualify for it if you're employed by a government or non not-for-profit organization you might be eligible for the public service student loan forgiveness. The, the PSLF program provides the remaining balance on your direct loans after you've made the equivalent of 120 qualifying monthly payments under an accepted repayment plan and while working full-time for an eligible employer. All right, y'all, we just gonna take this a step further, right? We're gonna take this. So we got 120, we're gonna divide that by 12 because it's 12, 12 months in a year, right? And 120. That means I gotta le legit work for 10 years for you to pay me back. 10 years? So like 10 years ago, when I worked in local government and my salary now, <laughs> I have quadrupled my salary in 10 years. I looked at them post my job for for the last my last government position not even a year ago y'all that thing ain't increased at all i would have been making pennies here i've quadrupled my salary i've paid off credit cards matter of fact i'm not even going into all of that i'm just going to put this video in to tell you guys how i killed debt and increased my credit score 
honestly, my credit score was the low 500s. I started paying attention to it at this, what, 545, and now I'm over 700. I would not have been able to do that in government. I would not. I would not. All right, so now we already talked about that. Y'all can kill me in the comments. I'm ready for it because, like, come on now. Y'all, I ain't gonna talk about y'all. I ain't gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about me. I can barely commit to a man for 10 months and you want me to commit to a job for 10 years? <laughs> What are these student loans doing? They gonna sit there anyhow. Like, what is the big thing about, oh, but they gonna pay for, we got some people out here paying for cars for 10 years. Sad, but some people do that. Like, why are we making it such a big deal to commit to this thing for one thing? We gotta increase our standards. We literally have to increase our standards. We have to champion for, for more for ourselves. And when you say, oh no, I'm staying with them for this, then automatically you're kind of declining yourself. Okay, sorry, because now I'm going all in on the, on the negative parts and I haven't even finished the benefits. One more benefit of um, government HR is that the military hires by association instead of by skills. So if you're like a military spouse, a military child, you get a higher chance of getting a job, which means somebody who might be more qualified for you is probably not gonna get the job, but you will because you are attached to the military. So that's a good benefit for those who wanna work in government HR, right? Or those who are in the military, kinda helps you get the job, kinda your network. In the civilian world, we use an actual network. There, you're already attached to like this network. So that's a benefit. I'm not even gonna talk about it and sound like I'm upset about it, cause I'm not. That's the way it works, right? That's the rules. Some of the benefits of civilian HR is that it's easy to create effective initiatives quickly. So one thing that irritated me when I worked in government is that we had a wellness program. Our wellness program was you do these different wellness initiatives, we'll give you PTO hours. That worked, but we can only give eight hours a year. I think some people could roll over up to 16 hours. So you only get two days off. It was good, but it was like, can't we do more? Like what, what else can we do? So some of the things that I had heard other companies doing who aren't in government is that they were giving away, like back then, you know, the, the Apple watches were like huge, massive back then. Even the exercise watches were just coming out. Like they were massive. And, and the good thing about it is that it helped companies to like say my employees are being healthy because they do this 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 and this and we've tracked them and we see that they're being healthy and that used to help with the insurance costs companies would not even pay for that like i got so frustrated because our government wouldn't pay for that we actually were able to get some of our benefits folks like our account managers and stuff to like sponsor some at a benefit fair that we'd had every year but it was frustrating because it was like if we did this on a regular basis not only would this help us with insurance not only would this help with them employee engagement. Not only would this help but with employee retention, but like this would help people feel like HR actually cared for them, the company actually cared for them. And so it just blew my mind. But another thing was like, I worked for the local government. We had no background screening system at all. This is why I know so much about backgrounds because I sat down and I learned it to death. I learned every part of it that I could ever learn. I went to tons of trainings across the state and on and on until I felt comfortable about it and I launched this background screening program. And of course the police department was like, well, we already been doing one for years, I was solid. What we did was we had new hires. The police department did their background screenings and I did mine. And mine brought up better results than the police department, which was absolutely amazing. The craziest thing is that one project took me like a year to launch. Why? Because I had to wait on so many people to approve it. I want to be able to identify something that works well for employees, test it out a bit. Let's launch this. Why does it take us a year? I'm talking about benefits and then I sound excited and all upset. But um, just saying that, that the, with the civilian HR, it is easier to create unique and effective initiatives quickly. Not so easy in government. Another thing is with the civilian HR, it's constantly opportunities to have your salary increase, constantly. First of all, you can leave and go to another company and just roll your retirement over. People are like, well, I'm staying for the pension. Now, government doesn't give the pension anymore. So people are like, well, I'm staying for the retirement. The 8% that they was taking out of my check back then, I already doing 10% now on a personal basis and already got other forms of retirement. I got more money than if I had waited for the state government's retirement. The next thing about civilian HR is that it has a wider variation of benefits. The company that I currently work for, not only do we offer 
the traditional, right? So we offer medical dental vision. We offer paid short-term and long-term disability. We, we give money into HSA and FSA. We also offer benefits like the Calm app, so you can use a premium Calm app to help you with being calm. We reimburse you for your fitness. We give you money to go and volunteer for a company. Not that we give you dollars, but we pay for your time off to go volunteer somewhere. The company I worked for before, we did the same thing. Like we would not only be off early on Fridays, but you could get paid to volunteer here you could also get reimbursed for your fitness it's like why wait for the government who just giving me these basics like for what they're not giving us much anymore majority of my career since i've left local government and my benefits have always been better yeah majority of my career so i think that what has happened is that the baby boomer, boomer generation has really molded us that working for the federal government working for local government just working government period is such an amazing place because they had the option of getting really nice pensions and retirements when they leave we ain't got that y'all they're not doing that for us no more anyhow all right so the next benefit of civilian HR is that HR is seen as a strategic partner. As long as you work for an organization that understands and values HR, which there's a lot of them now, especially since COVID, government, oh my God, we were like the stepchildren, both government um, facilities I worked at, and we never got like our own budget. They were like, oh, your budget is salaries and benefits, that's it. You could never do anything extra. If we did anything, well, you guys don't bring in any revenue. Yeah, we don't bring in revenue in other organizations, but because we're a strategic partner, they understand that the efforts that HR does really give such a return on investment in various places across your company. Anyhow, all right, see, I'm getting excited again. We didn't even get to the negatives and that I'm excited. So let me run through the negatives. So the negatives for government HR is that it just takes too long to increase your compensation or to improve your benefits. It just does. I can't tell you how we have like suggested better and better benefits. Even our insurance carriers have, our brokers have, and year after year's decline, we don't got it in the budget. It takes five years, three, four, five years before one thing get approved. That's just ridiculous in my opinion. The next thing about government that I don't think is amazing and that I think is an absolute negative is that jobs are repetitive. There's no variation in these jobs. Now, there's not only not a variation in the type of jobs that are available, there's no variation in the type of work that you do. You become a robot. You can't even think creative. This is why so many people struggle with strategy because you come out of government where you've just worked as a robot. You've been transactional. So now somebody tells you to think ahead, think outside the box, make some assumptions, use data to project the future. You can't do it. You're struggling. The next thing that's a negative for government HR is that HR just ain't seen as a strategic partner. I already told y'all that, so we're going to keep going. All right, so the next negative about government HR is that military is extremely repetitive. They literally just do, they like process orders. If that's an order for you to move to somewhere else, if that's an order for you to do, start doing another job, if that's an order for... You process and orders all day long, which is the same thing. You also being told exactly what to do. In the military, they give so much training that people who come to the civilian side, they get angry because they're like, well, why are they not going to teach us? They didn't teach none of us. We went to school. We went out there and did trial and error. We used resources, but nobody takes 16 weeks to sit down and give me a curriculum where I'm sitting in front of a class, listening to an instructor every day for X number of hours and still getting paid. That's just not where civilian HR or civilian jobs are. But in the government, you do the same job over and over. I say that's a negative because it doesn't prepare you not only for the next level, but it doesn't prepare you for anything outside of what you're doing. In civilian HR, you have different industries, you have different company sides, you have different leaders. It allows you to think differently, the company changes differently. So you're learning all types of stuff, which lets you qualify to not only move up in that organization or move up outside of that organization, but to move to any organization and be absolutely fine. The negatives about civilian HR, because there are some negatives about civilian HR. And the first thing is that the com compensation is just really transparent. You're not going to see the compensation for civilian HR really posted everywhere. That's why so many people are pushing for the Equal Pay Act and things like that. So I talked about that in my blog. I'll definitely put the link to that below. But I went into full detail on what the Equal Pay Act is and it's only being used in a few states across the U.S. If we can get that done federally, I think things will be better. But in civilian HR, it's just not transparent. Most times. Some companies are transparent about it. Most companies aren't. I, well, I noticed now that things are changing. So I guess it's a mixture. It's just not as transparent as government HR. Now, another negative about civilian HR is that most cultures are created around like 
arrogant. Most cultures are created around ignorance too. So a lot of times people will get so excited because they've moved up in this position and if they don't understand what this other person does, it may come across condescending or arrogant, but they're really doing that as a defense me mechanism because they don't know. That's definitely a negative. So that really works rough for HR because if someone's not used to your HR techniques and they're in a high position, that makes things a little bit uncomfortable. You gotta do a lot of kissing ass to get them right. And if you ain't doing that, then you're doing a lot of education, Keaton. Even at times you don't feel like it, you don't have the energy for it, you got another project that's super duper important. And that for me has been very, very challenging throughout my career at more than one organization. Cause I'd be like, Lord, if you get off your high horse, we can just learn this thing and keep going. But, <laughs> but people get so damn arrogant because they're ignorant. Like ignorance isn't a bad thing. There's so many things that I don't know and I'm ignorant too. I don't know how to fix no cars. I'm ignorant to fixing cars. I really don't know how to like sew in here. I'm ignorant to fix it to someone in here. Now I know about it, but to say, go and do it. I can't do it. I'm okay being ignorant in some things. That's what makes us all different and unique. But unfortunately in civilian HR, you deal with a whole bunch of that and people just ain't as comfortable with themselves to know that it's okay to not know. Just, it's bad to not learn. So I hope that this video really helped because y'all went in, in a good way and a bad way. But it was funny. That last video was so funny. I was, I actually laughed at myself a few times on that one, man, not only recording it, but also editing it. Now, if y'all want me to go harder on this military thing, which I feel like I hit it in a few places. If y'all want me to talk more about that, then just let me know like you did the last time and I'll do a video on it. Now y'all going to see me in this office. I know the last time I said, Oh, this is my last time using this background. That's because I bulk record. So I change up my hair, change up my clothes, change up my hair, <laughs> change up my lipstick. And I just keep recording. So please don't think for a second, like, she lied to us. No, I'm just recording all in one day, one week, one weekend. Usually, I usually do it all in one weekend. I did luckily have a like a time where I couldn't because I had so many resume reviews to do that I couldn't just keep recording. So I kind of bounced back to it. Now this weekend, I'm doing a ton of recording. So if you guys are new here, then I just told y'all all kinds of business about me and I hope that you're okay with it, but it definitely makes us, you know, cozy and get to know each other. Welcome, I'm Tamika. I've been working in HR 11 years now <laughs> and I am in a space where I just want to help others start, grow and propel in their career, feeling confident as themselves. So I hope that you found this information so helpful that you decide to subscribe. Now, if you're returning, y'all went in on that last video. <laughs> Just do me a favor, hit the like button. I cannot wait to see y'all on the next video.